purpose of this experiment was to try and find out the percentage purity of this compound here, which was iron to oxalate dihydrate. So what you needed to do was to weigh out, as you can see on the top hand balance, so what you needed to do was weigh out on the top hand balance approximately accurately, which sounds a bit of an oxymoron, 1.2 to 1.4 grams of the iron 2 ethane dioate. So we took a little weighing boat, we zeroed the top pan balance, we took the weighing boat off the balance, we put a couple of spatulas in, reweighed it till we had roughly 1.2 to 1.4. We recorded that mass, transferred the contents of the weighing boat into a beaker and weighed the dirty weighing boat again. So we knew exactly by weighing by difference how much of the ethane diode had been transferred to our beaker. Now we then added sulfuric acid because the titration has to be carried out under acidic conditions. However, um, the, this is not too soluble at room temperature so we warmed a little bit in a beaker. We then transferred the contents to a 250 volumetric flask and made it up to 250 with one mole of sulfuric acid to make sure it's extremely acidic. So we had the known mass of the ethane dioate in the flask and it was in extremely acidic conditions. What we then did was to pipette 25 uh, cm cubed of this into a conical flask and then carry out a titration. So we filled a burette up to 200 and uh, up to the mark with 0.02 molar potassium manganate solution. You can see here that as the potassium manganate solution is being added to the oxalate ion, the manganate is being decolorized as it gets reduced. So you can see in this example working out the weighing by difference shows here that the mass of the weighing boat wasn't exactly zero. So this is the actual mass of the impure solid that was transferred. So the mass of the impure iron ethane dioate dihydrate in Emma's case was equal to 1.2. 8.45 grams. Even though she didn't uh, get concordancy because the endpoint is quite difficult to distinguish, um, we've got an average titration volume here and again we would query the validity of that. We would have needed, if we had time, we've carried out seven more titrations. So if we take this as the average titration volume, uh, we can now work out the mole ratio. So what we need to do first is to break up the, the reaction into two half equations. So first of all, you've got the manganate ions, which are being reduced to Mn2 plus ions. So therefore, we need to balance this half equation. So we need four waters on this side. And therefore, we need eight hydrogens on this side. And therefore, five electrons. So when this is getting reduced, it's gaining five electrons. But the ethane dioate, don't forget, has got two reducing species. So the Fe2 plus will get oxidized and will pass another electron onto the manganate and the ethane dioate ions will also get oxidized and they get, they get oxidized to carbon dioxide and again to balance out the charge two electrons. So if we look at the ratio of electrons on the, the species that's becoming oxidized needs to gain five electrons, the species that are getting reduced in total need three. So if we times this by three because the ratio of iron to oxalate has always got to be the same, that will give us a total of, sorry, times it by five, that will give us a total of five times three is 15 electrons on this side. And therefore, if we times this equation by three, that will give us a total of 15 electrons. So when we add the two equations together, um, we get a lovely balanced equation where we've got three MnO4 minuses, so three Fe2 pluses to 
sorry, to five Fe3 pluses and five ethane diode ions. So if we now look at Emma's calculation, she's nicely put it into table to summarize what we've got. And you can see that the concentration in moles per decimeter cubed, the molar concentration of the manganate was 0 0.02 moles per dm cubed. The volume of the solution in centimeters cubed is the average titration volume, which was 21.1. And therefore, to calculate the number of moles, she simply multiplied concentration times volume divided by 1,000 to get it into dm cubed. To get the mole ratio, there's a larger number of moles of iron, so the mole ratio is 5 divided by 3, because it's a 5 to root 3 ratio, and that's how she's ended up with this number here. So, in 25 centimetres cubed, she has 7.033 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, minus 4 moles of the iron ethan diorate. But don't forget that's in 25 centimeters cubed, but originally the mass that Emma obtained was dissolved in 250, and that's why she's times it by a factor of 10 here. So that is the amount of the iron ethane of the iron ethane diorate, and now we know its amount, we can work out its mass. So we know the MR of the iron ethane diorate is 179.8. Why? Because it's Fe C204.2820. We know it's MR, and therefore we know the mass equals the number of moles times the MR, and that tells us that in the sample, in a pure sample, there would have been this mass. So finally, to get the percentage purity, this was the mass that Emma weighed out in a weighing boat, this was the mass that was calculated, so she got a calculation of 98.45% purity.